With the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are welcome to the New Heart Christian Ministries, a Bible-believing Christian family church, where we pray, sing, worship, express love, fellowship, discuss scripture and where we are constantly experiencing the diverse manifestations of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This Word that was with God in the beginning became flesh and has now made its dwelling among us. The New Heart Christian Ministries, Lending, Barcelona in Essex, where hopes are defined, refined and restored by the power of the Almighty God cordially invites you to their first and 2023 Bible Conference theme, and the Word was God, where the power in the Word of God will be manifest in a new dimension releasing those in bondage, setting the captives free and bringing fulfillment to those that have lost hopes. With Pastor Raf Olurotimi, the Senior Pastor RCCG Living Spring Parish, London, who is also the National Director of RCCG Sunday School UK, as the guest speaker of the day. The word of God is his testimony. Even though it may not look, it may not look so, but because he has said it, he testifies ahead of the physical manifestation. Date. 25th June 2023, Venue, Blue House Fan Community Association Hall, Drake Road, Lending, Basildon, Essex, SS155UH, Time, 3 p.m. Prompt, there will be an interactive section with biblical questions and answers, musical performances, and prayers for the people during this special service. Come and be blessed with the word of God that demolishes strongholds and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. If you say prayer that we pray and pray and pray and we will not stop praying until the victory is achieved. And the word was God. Bible conference to be hosted by New Heart Christian Ministries, Linden, Basidon in Essex, date in the afternoon of the 25th June 2023. 3 p.m. start precisely by God's grace. The Lord bless you as you come along. My fathers, mothers, brothers and sisters in the Lord. By this time of the day when this program goes start, your church Sunday service for dumb finish, make you please come and arrive in time of. God go bless you plenty plenty in Jesus name. Amen. Be dear and be blessed. Shalom. the Lord. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. We just want to magnify you. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you. We thank you. We love you. What a mighty God we serve is faithful in every way. We made it again. So the end of the month, ah, this is the last day in the month of May. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank you for another opportunity you have given unto us to come here tonight for Bible study. This is our Bible study time in your awesome presence. We want to say thank you for seeing us through the month of May. Hallelujah. We are not ungrateful at all because you are just too full of compassion and mercy. You are God of grace, visiting us with grace and loving kindness and tender mercy. Blessed be your holy name forever. We thank you for the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. We thank you for purifying our body, soul, and spirit. The Bible says, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. So therefore, we thank you, Jesus, for washing us clean with your precious blood in this month of sanctification as you have given unto us thank you so much for sanctifying every area of our lives from the beginning of this month till now we are saying thank you to the most high god we say glory be to your name forever we love you lord so therefore as we have come to learn at your feet holy spirit you are the breath of god you are the valley adder. You are adding valleys to our life every blessed day. We are not taking it for granted. You are the spirit of God, Holy Spirit. You are the spirit of truth. You are our comforter. You are the spirit that speaks the mind of God to us. Hallelujah. 
have your way. Take over. Teach us your word expressly this evening. Your word that breaks, your word that delivers, your word that set free, your word that heals the broken hearted and bind up their wounds, your word that melts all bitterness, your word that melts our filthiness, your word that change our unworthiness. So, Lord, speak it unto us tonight through the teaching of your word tonight. He loves and teach us through the teaching of tonight by the power in the blood of Jesus. So therefore, Lord, as we begin to worship you in spirit and not in flesh, let there be a release of abundance, blessings, and breakthrough in every area of our lives, even in the powerful name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your willing name forever. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Oh, Lord, your tenderness melting all my bitterness. Oh, Lord, I receive your love. Oh, Melting all my filthiness, oh love, I receive your love. Oh Lord, I receive your love. Oh, Changing my filthiness, oh Lord, I receive your love. Oh Lord, your loveliness, changing my unworthiness, oh spirits oh lord your loveliness oh lord your tenderness melting all our bitterness and filthiness let it be so for us in the powerful name of jesus thank you holy spirit in jesus mighty name i have worship thank you lord praise god mm. praise god praise jesus we thank our sister in the Lord for that uh, praise and worship. May Lord continue to strengthen you um, in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, we um, we are back again. Uh, our Bible study. Hello, everyone. Um, wherever you are watching this particular program. We sincerely welcome you uh, to another session of our Bible study, Time with God, as we come together to learn at the feet of our Savior. 
We thank God for being with us in this ministry, for taking us forward step by step. We are not there yet, but we are getting there gradually. Hallelujah. Precept by precept. We thank God for your life, for all your support in all ways. May the Lord bless you all. We remember you in our prayers all the time, praying that may the Lord perfect everything concerning you in Jesus' name. Thanks so much. We thank you so much. We appreciate you. Oh yes, it's another time in the presence of the Lord. The Lord has trusted us with his word. He has trusted us into our hands and it has now become our responsibilities to teach it, preach it and spread it, you and I. He has committed to our care numerous things of which he expects us to be good stewards. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 to 8, Paul wrote and said, For our exhortation does not come from error or impurity or by way of deceit, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who examines our heart. For we never came with flattering speech, as you know, nor with the pretext for greed. God is witness, nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others, even though as apostles of Christ we might have asserted our authority. But we proved to be gentle among you as nursing mother. Sorry? Okay, the music is still on. Sorry about that. I don't think they've been hearing. Or I don't know whether they get all the um, information I've been saying. So I will continue. Okay, as I was talking about um, what Paul wrote, having so fond an affection for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives because you had become very dear to us. With this wonderful message from the Lord and spoken from Paul his servant, we have brought to you another topic today from New Heart Christian Ministries based in Barcelona in Essex, just in case this is your first time of joining us. Hallelujah! Our Bible study is on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. UK time as we are doing now. It's online and on Fridays is our Friday prayer meeting, prayer changes things, also at 8 p.m. UK time. Hallelujah! Sundays uh, is our Sunday devotional service. This we do at our worship center in Barcelona in Essex. Please, uh, you can visit our website uh, for our uh, uh, specific location in Barcelona. Um, please find it in your heart to join us on one of these days and the Lord bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Okay, let us first congratulate fellow Nigerians over the peaceful presidential transition of power in Nigeria to Ashiwaju Ahmed Chinubu on the 29th of May the first Nigerian president with first lady as a pastor. We thank God on behalf of Nigerians. No riot or killings, no bloodshed. We thank God Almighty. Our prayer is that may the Lord let the tenure of office of the present uh, president uh, be peaceful in Nigeria and may the economy blossom and people's lives improve in Jesus' name. May crime cease and love among the people and trust prevail in Jesus' name. What I can bring out from this election is what God wants us to see and know. Nigeria is a very great country, a country of great and religious people. You see, before this presidential election in Nigeria, there were various prophecies from various people concerning it. But all these prophecies came to nothing. God just wanted to see some things in those that usually parade themselves as prophets who have been coming to us that they hear from God. I am one of the people that do not support criticizing our leaders or anyone publicly or condemning anyone. But this case just needed to be addressed because many people have been misled by fake prophecies and other faiths are laughing at us. I see it as a betrayal of Christian faith, deception of highest order and some kind of process that brought disgrace to the Christian faith in front of the unbelievers. Some videos were produced and presented to the public before the election. In these videos, we could see some Christian leaders and prophets who were called by the name of the Lord coming out to give prophecies concerning the election. These are the people that bear the trust of the people. When they say there will be rain, their members will believe the rain will actually fall. They trusted them and followed them wholeheartedly. These are people that are very sound in doctrine, who have given many prophecies in the past and have large congregation. The election has come and gone and the new president has been sworn in. 
their prophecies against this election has come to nothing. What I have just said to round this up is what the Lord said in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 20 that I will be, I will be reading from the New Living Standard Version uh, of the Bible. Uh, if you have, whichever one you have, please can you just open to it. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 22. The Lord says, If the prophet speaks in the Lord's name, but his position does not happen or come true, you will know that the Lord did not give that message. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 22. You will know that the Lord uh, did not give that message. That prophet has spoken without my authority and need not be feared. You don't need to fear such prophet. That was what the Lord said. The New International Version said that that prophet has spoken presumptuously. So do not be alarmed. This is very dangerous because some of us believe in prophecies from God and if people could come to the people and present a lie of this magnitude, this is dangerous. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 22 from verse, verses 19 to 28, King Ahab and Jehoshaphat wanted to hear from the Lord before going ahead to capture Rambut Gilead, which had been part of the land of Israel before King Aram took it from them. They wanted to hear from the Lord if it was something that they can pursue and get back. So the king of Israel brought together the prophet, about 400 of them, and asked them, Shall I go to war against Ramoth Gilead or shall I refrain? Go, they answered, for the Lord will give it into the king's hand. Jehoshaphat, the, the visiting king, now asked if there is a prophet of the Lord that one can inquire from prophet, uh, inquire from him what the Lord says. Prophet Micaiah was suggested and was sent for. What happened is that all the other prophets were prophesying the same thing. Attack Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, they said, for the Lord will give it into the king's hand. But when Micaiah came, he said to the king, Ahab, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I just cut it short. Um, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the multitudes of heaven standing around him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who will entice Ahab into attacking Rabot Gilead and go, go into his death there? Okay, that is what um, Prophet Micaiah was telling Ahab. He said, And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Rabot Gilead and going to his death there? Death has been predicted for Ahab. So, but how, how, who is going to convince him now so that he can go ahead and uh, go to that wall? Okay, let us rewind a little bit. Before this time, in the book of 1 Kings chapter 21, Ahab has killed Naboth and has taken his vineyard, assisted by his wife Jezebel. The Lord was displeased and sent prophet Elijah the Tishbite to him to tell him that this is what the Lord says, Have you not murdered a man and seized his uh, property? This is what the Lord says concerning you. In the place where dogs licked up Naboth's blood, Dogs will lick up your blood. Yes, yours, because you have sold yourself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord. He says, I'm going to bring disaster on you. I will wipe out all your descendants and cut off from Ahab every last male in Israel. Slave or free. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and that of Basha, son of Ahijah, because you have aroused my anger and have caused Israel to sin. The Lord has said it, and it will surely come to pass. And the time was now. Okay, God wanted to bring that one to pass. Let us look into the lives of those who God has used as prophets in the Bible and compare their standard with those who are saying things now and that thing did not come to pass and people will still be going to them that they want to hear from the Lord. I'm not saying, uh, I'm not saying this here to run anyone down. No, far from it. But we have to save the church of God and the beloved People that worship here from becoming a victim of false prophecies. A lot are happening in the church of God. We have many people have been taken for a ride in order to take their money. People are giving out their money to some church leaders who are saying they want to take them to heaven or to meet Jesus. People believe them, but which ended to be all lies. I saw a post of a man recently on Facebook who said he prefers to be in hell than to be in heaven with Christians. If you are one of those that are making people to say this to the church of God, or you are making people to leave the church of God, or you are bringing the name of God to disrepute, you have God to answer to. We are, we, we are saying our own. 
let those who have ears hear what uh what you're saying you need to change and repent and start to do what is good the book of matthew chapter 13 verse 9 and mark chapter 4 verse 9 says whoever has ears to hear let them hear it is a good thing to be a prophet but it is not by force if you are not a prophet don't force yourself don't use juju power on youth voodoo to be deceiving people or to be coming in front of the people and be telling them that this is what the lord said and when god has not said anything people will believe you because they believe that you are a man of god you are a woman of god hallelujah so in in the, in the book of first kings chapter 22 and in second chronicles chapter 18 they called micaiah to come and give his own version of prophecies but when he gave his own it wasn't like the other prophet micaiah said i saw the lord sitting on his throne with all the multitudes of heaven standing around him on his right and on his left and the lord said who will entice ahab into attacking rabbit gilead and going to his death there one suggested this and another that finally a spirit came forward stood before the lord and said i will entice him and the lord said by what means the lord asked i will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all these prophets he said you will succeed in enticing him said the lord go and do it so now the lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours Micaiah was telling um, Ahab, The Lord has decreed disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Canaan, who was also a prophet, and has said to Ahab that he will be victorious along with other prophets, went up and uh, he went up and slapped Micaiah in the face. He told Micaiah, Which way did the Spirit of the Lord go when he went from me to speak to you? He asked. Micaiah replied, You will find out on the day you go into hiding in an inner room. Okay, the king of Israel then ordered, Take Micaiah and send him back to Ammon and the ruler of the city and to Jewish the king's son and say, This is what the king says. Put this fellow in prison and give him nothing but bread and water until I return safely. Micaiah declared, If you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Micaiah declared, If you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added, Mark my words, all you people. Hallelujah. Mark my words. I've said this. What happened? King Hebab died in that war. King Hebab died in that war. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went up uh, to uh, Rabbi Gilead. During the fierce fight, someone drew his bow at random and hit the king of Israel between the sanctions uh, of his armor. The king told his chariot driver, wheel around and get me out of the fighting. I have been wounded. All day long, the, ba the battle raged and the king was propped up in the chariot facing the Arameans. The blood from his wound ran onto the floor of the chariot and that evening he died. As the sun was setting, a cry spread through the army. Every man to his town, since the, the, they have killed the king. Every man to his land. So the king died and was brought to Samaria and they buried him there. They washed the chariot at the pool in Samaria where the prostitutes bathed and the dogs licked up his blood as the word of the Lord had declared. Hallelujah. This is how prophecy works. This is how it works. But to be honest, I don't know how people can come before the children of God or before anyone and say that God says something he did not say. We tend to believe these things and it is sad. A lot of lives have been ruined by, by uh, a lot of li uh, lives have been ruined by fake prophecies. Many marriages have been destroyed by fake prophecies. Many, many lives, many people have committed suicide because they gave their wrong prophecies. Anyway, um, it's just a little bit of warnings. If you are one of those people that say, uh, that tell people what God has not said, you are, you are going to answer to God. Okay, and if you are one of those people running around with prophet, prophet, you, you want to hear from this prophet, and you can't read your own Bible, you can't pray, you are going to be a victim. Learn how to read your Bible, learn how to pray, learn how to fast, learn how to meditate on the word of God. It works, huh? Is it not? It works, it works. People are giving testimony. They read their Bible. God revealed Himself. God revealed Himself to them. So people said a lot of things about Nigerian election, and some of them they came to nothing. I don't know where they are hiding their face now. Even they said on the uh, on the swearing-in day, um, uh, the president is going to be arrested. 
and they won't let that thing take place. No, I'm not. I'm. I'm not talking about politics. I'm just talking about how people are degrading the church of God with false prophecies. Anyway, um, that was um, that was just about Nigerian pre uh, presidential election and the swearing of the new president. We will keep on praying for the country and all the countries of the world for peace and tranquility. We pray for all those that will be involved in running the new government in Nigeria. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 1, that for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 1, says that the king's heart is in the heart of the Lord, like the rivers of water. He turns it wherever he wishes. May the Lord touch their heart and govern the country with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Anyway, um, today we'll be talking on our Bible study. Today we'll be talking about one important issue of concern that arose in the Bible during the time of the children of Israel in the wilderness on their way to the promised land. This is a journey of 40 days that lasted 40 years, as we have all been saying. A lot happened during that journey, but this teaching will be singling out the conduct of the 12 spies that were sent to go and spy the land of Canaan in the book of Numbers, chapters 13 and 14. Their conduct punishment and what can we learn as Christians of today from their unbelieving actions. What they did made the children of Israel walk a journey of 40 days and 40 years which saw to the demise of the entire generation that left Egypt. All of them, all the Israelite community that, that, that the stories of the ten pies except Joshua and Caleb were struck down with a plague and died as the Lord has said. The children of Israel are the Hebrews. We cannot stop talking about them. We cannot. We cannot because they are the source of our Christian faith. Those who founded Christian faith were Jews. Our Lord Jesus Christ was from the tribe of Judah, which was one of the tribes of Israel. They are one of the uh, evidences that our God is real and working wonders in the affairs of men. Okay, it's not that they are better than any nation. Just God just chose them. God just loved them and said, "Okay, through these people, I'm going to bless the nation of the world. I'm going to bless everybody." And from the tribe of Israel, Judah um, is one of the tribe of twelve tribes of Israel. So from that particular um, tribe, we have our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God! You know, God called Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter twelve a childless man with his wife Sarah, and God made covenant with him that it will make him a father of many nations, despite their age. This was when God decided to bring redemption to mankind, to bring back the relationship we lost in the Garden of Eden. This process started when he called Abraham. The Bible says Abraham was 75 years old when God called him. God said to Abraham that, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. He said to him that that place is where his descendants will hold in the future. We are talking about the land of Canaan. Okay. God said to him that, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever causes you, I will cause and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Praise God. In verses 4 to 7 of the book of Genesis chapter 12, the Bible says, So Abraham went as the Lord had showed him. That is an obedience from his own side. And Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Aaron. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew, Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and all the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Listen to that. The spies we are talking about, they were sent to the land of Canaan. Okay, to go and spy on that land. But now, when God called Abraham, he told him, this particular land, you are, I'm taking you there, I'm good, your descendant we possess that land. So the first place um, Abraham went, it was Abram at that time, was the land of Canaan. They arrived there. So Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Mori and Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. So don't let us forget that. God has willed that land, the land of Canaan, to the descendant of Abraham. But according to what we have just read now, the Canaanites were still living on that land at that time. The Lord said to him, To your offspring, I will give this land. In Genesis 15, Abraham became worried about the covenant God made with him that it will make him a father of many nations. Because as at this time, he hasn't got a child. And age was hard enough. 
So he asked God in Genesis chapter 15 verse 2 that Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my state is Eliezer of Damascus? You have given me no children. So a servant in my household, will that one be my heir? Abraham posed that question to God, our Sovereign Lord. Okay? Don't let us forget that it was God that called him out to leave his people and promised him that he would change his life. One of the changes God promised him was that he would make him a father of many nations and his offspring would be like the stars that no one can count. That promise took place in chapter 3 uh, before this time. Many things happened okay, in the life of Abraham before we got to chapter 15. He has been to Egypt where his wife was nearly taken from him permanently. He separated with Lot, um, uh, from Lot, he separated because uh, they have become large. He was involved in the war. When Lot, his nephew, was carried away in that war, Abraham called out uh, the 318 trained men born in his household and went in pursuit as far as Dan and brought Lot back. He has also paid his tithe in Genesis chapter 14 verses 18 to 20. So a lot happened before chapter 15. Abraham has obeyed God, but the issues of children has not been resolved. Anyone could be worried. You, I mean, yes, some you, you made a promise, and I'm still getting old, and I haven't got a child. What is going on, Lord? Tell me. So, yes, has God. What about the child you promised me? What about that covenant of father of many nations? What about that descendant you mentioned? What about those promises, Lord? Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man, Eliezer, your servant, will not be your heir. Mm -mm. That one is not going to happen. But a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. God then took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars. If indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says in verse 6 of the book of Genesis chapter 15 that Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. God also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of all of the charges to give you this land to take possession of it. Hallelujah. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of you? Give me some evidences. Just don't give me something. So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, a goat and a ram. Okay, three animals. Each three um, of three years old, along with the dove and the young pigeon. Abraham brought all these to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. The birds of prey came down on carcasses, but Abraham drove them away. Okay, let us move on. As the sun was setting, Abraham fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and a dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain, okay, now God is repeating this thing again. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that for a hundred years your descendant will be strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves. And afterward, they will come out with great processions. You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good age. In the fourth generation, your descendant will come back here, for the sins of the Amorite has not yet reached its full measure. Um, brothers and sisters, I think you are following me. God said to Abraham that in the fourth generation, his descendant will come back to Canaan. The term Amorite meaning beta, a rebel, a babbler, who were idol worshippers that God mentioned to Abraham were some certain island mountainers who inhabited the land of Canaan, described in Genesis as descendant of Canaan, the son of Ham, as it was mentioned in the book of Genesis chapter 10 verses 16 to 17 that Canaan was the father of Sidon, his first son, and of Heth. He was also the father of the Jebusite, Amorite, Gagashite, Evite, Akite, Sinite, Avadite, Zemarite and Amathite. Everything is tight, 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 tight. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 26, King Ahab's act of sinful ways of life was compared to the Amorite, where the Bible says that he acted in the most detestable way by going after the disgusting idols, just as all the Amorites had done, whom Jehovah drove out before the Israelites. The Amorites were idol worshippers. Also in 2 Kings chapter 21 verse 11, the Bible says that Manasseh, the king of Judah, has done all these detestable things. He has acted more wickedly than all the Amorites before him and he has made Judah sin with disgusting, uh, disgusting idols. The Amorites are evil, but their sin has not yet reached the point where God uh, has decided to drive them out of the land. The nature of the wickedness of the Canaanites is described in the book of Leviticus chapter 18 
verses 24 to 28, we are God told the children of Israel that do not defy yourself in any of these ways because this is how the nation that I'm going to drive out before you became defiled. Even the land was defiled. So I punished it for its sins and the land vomited out its inhabitants. But you must keep my decrees and my laws. The native born and the foreigners residing among you must not do any of these detestable things. For all these things were done by the people who lived in the land before you and the land became defiled. And if you defy the land, it will vomit you out as it has vomited out the nations that were before you. As at the time uh, God was promising Abraham the land and the time Abraham was passing through the land, the sins of the Amorites were not yet to the scale of punishment. But God said the descendant of Abraham will possess the land. We are talking about this land of Canaan. Okay, So why are we here so that we don't get lost? In the beginning of this teaching, I said it is about the 12 spies. What about them? What did they do wrong and the consequences that followed? And what are the things we today's Christians can learn from, uh, from their actions? To get to know them, we need to talk a bit what brought the issues of spies and how it all started. That is why I've been talking about Abraham, blah, blah, blah. He went this, he went that, he did this, he did that. Okay, so Abraham begot Isaac at his old age. Um, God fulfilled, God fulfilled um, uh, his promises um, uh, with him and I gave him, we know that there was, uh, there was Ishmael before Isaac, but Isaac is the um, covenant child. So Abraham begot Isaac at his old age. Uh, the couple did not have their first child as promised by God until chapter 21 of the book of Genesis. Okay, Genesis 21 verse 5 says that Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him, according to the word of God that was pronounced upon them in the book of Genesis chapter 17 verse 16, where the Bible says, I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. Okay, I will bless her so that she will be the mother of all nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Isaac was the only child of Sarah for Abraham. Isaac was the only child of um, Sarah for Abraham. Okay. Um, but Abraham had eight um, children. Ishmael from Agar, Sarah's slave. Isaac from Sarah and six others from Kentura from Abraham, um, who Abraham married after the death of Sarah. Abraham was 75. When God called him out and made covenant with him, he was 100 when he had Isaac, the promised child. Abraham had Isaac and Isaac had Esau and Jacob. Jacob later had 12 sons. They are the ones that became the 12 tribes of Israel. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Sacha, Zebulon, Joseph, and Benjamin, all of whom became the heads of their own family groups later. Jealousy among brothers, the sons of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel in Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 to 32, but an angel led one of them, Joseph, the second to the last sons of Jacob, to be sold to Egypt, where he became the uh, as a slave, where he became the prime minister and next to King Pharaoh. I just need to cut so that I don't I don't need to mention all those full story that um, the wife of uh, Potiphar said she should lie with, him, with her and things like that. I just cut all those uh, bits and pieces off. Um, I just need to go straight so that I don't waste much of your time. Joseph's influence and power when he became the second in command to King Pharaoh in Egypt helped his family he had left behind in the land of Canaan where Femi was eating her to move down to Egypt. The book of Genesis chapter 46 verses 26 to, 7, 26 to 27 says that all those who went to Egypt with Jacob, those who are his direct descendant, not counting his sons, wives, numbered 60, 66 persons, with the two sons who had been born to Joseph in Egypt, the members of Joseph's family, which went to Egypt was 70 in all. They grew up from here, and after 430 years of them in Egypt, God raised Moses up to go and lead them out to the promised land which God promised Abraham. Can you see where we've been coming from now? God called Abraham out, he made covenant with him, and he said, your descendant will inherit the land of Canaan. Okay, and uh, everything started getting on. So, Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had uh, Esau and Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. A lot of. So after 430 years, okay, and uh, when, the, when Joseph was sold uh, as a slave to Egypt, uh, he went through a lot and became second in command to Pharaoh. His influence in that particular country helped uh, his families in, land, in the land of Canaan to migrate to Egypt. 
Okay, and um, Pharaoh was very nice to them. He gave them the land of Goshen because of their livestock. You know, the Egyptians they don't like livestock. They worship abus and things like that. So the children of Israel they grew up from there, and after 430 years, them in Egypt. God raised Moses up to go and lead them out to the promised land which God promised Abraham. Okay, the journey was about to go to the promised land that God has uh, promised Abraham. That's why we call our God covenant keeping God. In the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse, uh, verse 37, and the people of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkot about 600,000 men on food besides women and children. Some scholars, you know what they said, they believe that the total number of Israelites who left Egypt during the Exodus, women and children and old men included, was around 2.4 million people. If we include Egyptians who choose to join the Israelites, the number will have been greater. The book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 38 says, many other people went up with them and also large droves of livestock, both flocks and herds. So if we have 600,000 men, then we have other people that join them. They must, they must be in millions, to be honest with you. As of the time they were living in the land of Egypt, they have become larger and already a nation. The 12 tribes have been formed. Don't let us forget that God has set a timeline with Abraham how long his descendant would spend in the foreign land. When the time came, Moses and Hebrew, who was raised up in the palace of Pharaoh, was called by God to bring them out. The journey that the Bible called the Exodus. They left the land of Egypt at night with God leading them through the path. They have never traded up with a pillar of fire during the night and pillar of cloud during the day. Enduring love for these people. Enduring love. They passed through the Red Sea with the mighty hands of the Almighty God who parted the sea and made them walk on the dry land. The journey continued in the wilderness fighting their way with various nations they came across on their way. They eventually arrived at the land of Canaan. But before they entered the land, God asked them to go and spy on the land that was in the book of Numbers chapter 13. God asked them to go and spy on the land. The book of Numbers is the fourth book of uh, Old Testament of the Bible written by Moses. The book was given that name because of the Lord's instruction to Moses in Numbers chapter 1 verse 3 to number or count all the Israelite males from 20 years old and upward, all that are able to forth um, to war. In uh, verse 1 of the book of Numbers chapter, uh, Numbers chapter 13, the Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites from each ancestral tribe, send one of his leaders, they call them probably chief. Those people are trustworthy, who people believe in, and those are the people that Moses chose and ask them that, um, okay, uh, be a spy, you have to go to that land of Canaan to spy for us. So as they were 12 tribes, they were told to select one person from each tribe to form a team of spies to the land. You might have been wondering, um, couldn't God see the land and tell them what was in what was in there instead of asking spies to go there? At least we heard that God said it's, it's a land full of milk and honey. Okay, you have been asking, why do they have to go and spy that land? At least God must have seen uh, what is there and uh, uh, tell them. God could have done that and could have told them what, what they should expect. But we knew in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 verses 21 to 23 that it was the children of Israel themselves that first requested for this exercise. It was them that first requested for this exercise. The verses quoted Moses reiterating before the assembly of the children of Israel about the past. He said to them, See, the Lord your God has given you the land. Go up and take possession of it as the Lord, the God of your ancestors told you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Then all of you came to me and said, Let us send men ahead to spy out the land for us and bring back a report about the route we are to take and the town we will come to. And you see, God has been leading you from the land of Egypt. And you are now demanding that, Oh, we will go and spy. We want to know the route. Eh? Whether we have to go to motorway, whether we have to go to expressway. You, you are sending people to go and you are forgotten that God has been leading you right from the land of Egypt. Praise God. Okay, alright. The idea seemed good to me, so I selected 12 of you. One man from each tribe. They left and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Eshkol and exploited, taking with them some of the fruit of the land. 
They brought it down to us and reported it is a good land and the Lord your God is giving us. They were the ones that actually requested for the spies to be sent before God told Moses and Moses selected 12 strong men and who can be trusted and give them the instructions. When they said that is what they want, God said, okay, if that is what you want, go. So, millions of people, they left the land of Egypt. The pillars of um, um, cloud was leading them in the day. The pillar of life was still then denied. Nobody asked for any route. They now about to enter the land. They now requested that. No, we want to know which route we have to take. So when Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, go off to Negev and uh, onto the hill country. See what the Lord is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of time do they live in? Okay, are they on walled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? No, you see, are, are, are there trees in it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. It was the season for the first uh, ripe grave. So they went up and explored the land from the desert of Zin as far as Rehob toward Lebo Hamad. They went up through the Negev and came to Hebron, where Haiman. Shishai and Talmai, the descendant of Anak, lived. Uh, Anak, they are, these are the descendants of giant. Abram had been built seven years before Zon in Egypt. When they reached the valley of Eshkol, they cut off, off a branch bearing a single a cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them along with some pomegranates and figs. That place was called the valley of Eshkol because of the cluster of grapes the Israelites cut off there. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. Let us note yeah, that the land these people were going to enter now was the land of Canaan. This was the land God promised to Abraham and his descendant and the same land that Jacob was living before going to Egypt. Are you with me? Is the land that it was before he go to The book of Genesis 37 verse 1 established that. And Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. We never had him moved away from there. In chapter 46, um, verses 25 to 26 of Genesis. The Bible says, And they, Joseph's siblings, after their reunion with him, went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. You know when they discovered Joseph in Egypt was become a prime minister now and they are going back. So the Bible says, they went back to the land of Canaan and they told their father, Oh, Joseph is yet alive and is the governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted. You know, anytime, anytime I remember this union of Joseph and uh, I always, my, my heart always melt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. Okay? What we did not read was that when Joseph's brothers were going to and forth between Egypt and Canaan, we never had to cross the Red Sea. And it did not take them that long to go and come back with messages. And when Jacob was going to Egypt with his people, they never crossed the Red Sea. And even when his body was being taken back to the land of Canaan for burial, when he died at the age of 147, we never heard of Red Sea. Did you get that? So now, when God is now taking them to the land of Canaan, the same land, they have to pass through the Red Sea. Okay. What happened was, according to Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 to 22, when Pharaoh let the people, uh, let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country. So that was shorter for God said if they face war they might change their minds and return to Egypt so God led the people around by the desert route toward the Red Sea the Israelites went up out of Egypt ready for battle back to the spy maybe that is what people are saying that that joy will have caused, um, cost them 11 days to walk if they have taken that shorter route okay so but now they did, did uh, that didn't happen at the end of 40 days, the spies returned from exploring the land and brought back these three different types of fruit, the grapes, figs, and pomegranates. I think 20 days to go and 20 days back, making 40 days journey. I'm not quite sure because the, the, the Bible says 40 days journey. Okay? We are not very sure whether it's 20 days go or 20 days back. Or they spend 20 days spying that uh, particular country. Anyway, it says 40 days journey. Hallelujah. They came to the camp and gave two different reports. We are not talking about these 12 spies now. The 12, 12 of them, they came back and gave two different reports. 
Only two out of these 12 gave a favorable report that they can go and conquer that city. But the other 10 said that is impossible. They created fear in the heart of the people. They said the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. They said they even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittite, Jebusite, and Amorite live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the sea and along Jordan. Even though Caleb stood against them and said they can go and win, they still did not believe him. He said they should go up and take possessions of the land, for we can certainly do it. The men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had exploited. They said, The land we exploit devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The descent of Anak come from Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our eyes. And we looked at the same, uh, at the same to them. You, you, you know, when you, if you have been seeing the top building, seeing the post, one day you saw a, a small view, you say, what is this? Because they, see, they saw giant, and in their own eyes, they look like an ant. And even though we look and, and not like to ourselves, we even look like an ant to them as well. So, in chapter 14 of the book of Numbers, that night all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness, why is the Lord bring remember that they said, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, We should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Now they want to cross the Red Sea now. So Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of Jephnen, who were among those who had exploited the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, The land we pass through and exploit is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land. A land from with me can hold him, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone. But the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. But the whole assembly talked about stoning them. Then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting to all the Israelites. The Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me? In spite of all the signs I performed among them, ha! I will strike them down with a plague and destroy them. But I will make you into a nation greater and stronger than they. But Moses pleaded for them and God forgave them but said that the Lord replied, I have forgiven them. Okay, that's not the problem. As you ask, nevertheless, as surely as I live, hi, as surely as I live and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, not one of those who saw my glory and the signs I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness but who disobeyed me and tested me ten times. Not one of them will ever see the land I promised on hold to their ancestors. No one who has treated me with contempt will ever see the. But because my servant, Caleb, has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to, and his descendant will inherit it. Since the Amalekite and the Canaanite are living in the valleys, turn back tomorrow and set out towards the desert along the road to the Red Sea, and thus began the 40 years journey. Okay. God said to them, Since the Amalekite and the Canaanite are living in that valley, turn back tomorrow, don't go forward anymore, and set out toward the desert along the route to the Red Sea, and thus began the 40 years journey. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, So tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very thing I had you say. You know, I mentioned it, that they said well, they would have preferred to, 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 to perish in the, um, in the wilderness. Okay, and just tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very thing I had you say. In this wilderness, your bodies will fall. Every one of you, 20 years old or more, who has counted in the censored and who has grumbled against me, not one of you will enter the land I swore with uplifted hand to make your home, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. As for your children that you said will be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land you have rejected. But as for you, your bodies will fall in this wilderness 
Your children will be shepherds here for 40 years, suffering for your unfaithfulness until the last of your bodies lies in the wilderness. So they took the record of them. All of them. They took accounts ritually. They can them, no matter how many they are. For 40 years, one year for each of the 40 days we explore the land, you will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will surely do these things to this, to this old wicked community, which has banded together against me. They will meet their hand in this wilderness. Here, they will die. So the men Moses had sent to explore the land who returned and made the whole community grumble against him by spreading a bad report about it. These men who were responsible for spreading the bad report about the land were struck down and died of plague before the Lord. Of the men who went to explore the land, only Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of Jephunneh survived. These spies were part of the children of Israel who have witnessed all the miracles of God which he has performed in their midst. They have witnessed the twelve plagues in Egypt, the death of uh, Pharaoh's fighters, the parting of the Red Sea, manna from heaven, water from the rock, various wars that the Lord has fought and won for them. They couldn't trust God. They have forgotten all those mighty works he did in their midst. All the labor that God have, um, have put out into place for the covenant he made with Abraham came to pass. They wanted to kick it and dismantle it. Same applies to some of us who are Christians. Despite all the miracles, signs, and wonders that the Lord has been doing in our lives, and in the lives of others, which they have, have been coming before us to give testimony. You know when people come to church and give testimony, they are just testifying to the wonders of God in their lives. This is contrast with the spy that Joshua sent to Jericho in um, uh, Joshua chapter 2. They went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. When Jericho's ruler tried to apprehend them, Rahab hid them and then helped them escape through the window, thus saving their lives. When they left, they went into the hills and stayed there three days until the pursuers had searched all along the road and returned without finding them. Then the two men started back. They went down out of the hills forded the river and came to Joshua son of Nun and told him everything that had happened to them. They said to Joshua, The Lord has surely given the whole land into our hands. All the people are melting in fear because of us, uh, because of what, uh, this was based on what Rahab, the Lord said to them in verses 8 to 11 of the book of Joshua chapter 2 that I know that the Lord has given you this land and that great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Sihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorite east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our heart melted in fear and everyone's courage filled because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven, above and on the head below. They at this time did not doubt God, and what they did brought victory to them when they raided um, the city. When we lack faith or do not trust God, we let him down. And that is why many people failed in their effort. Jonathan saw son said in Samuel chapter 14 verse 6 to 7 to his armor bearer, when they saw large number of Philistine fighters in their camp, and there were only two that come, let's go over to the uh, outpost of these uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Peter was already walking on the water, but in realizing his environment, he started to sink. In the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 29 to 31, the Bible says, Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. Cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Trusting God is not a choice for you and I. It is something we must have. Their failure to trust God was a process that took Israel 40 years. But because of the covenantal laws of the Lord, he did not give up on Israel. According to history, and as the Lord has said, this harrowing ritual was repeated annually for 40 years until those who doubted that they could attain the promised land finally died off. Hallelujah. We have to trust God. We have to believe in God. That's one of the things we need to learn from this 12 tribe. They confused people. They went to a land. God has been doing wonderful things in your life. God has brought you out from the land of Egypt. He has, you have seen the way all the fighters of the Egyptians, how they died. You have seen how God dried the Red Sea 
Dutch sea and you walk, walked on the dry land, you've eaten manna, you've watered, God has brought water out of drug for you. You've seen all these miracles. And when you read at Jericho, okay, you all this kind of thing, you 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 forgotten about all these things. You forgotten about all these things, and all you can now say is that um, um no 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 we can't conquer them. All the wars you have fought when you left Egypt, you fought so many wars. Okay, and the battles were fierce. You defeated the Amalekites. You you everything. You forgot. You you are forgotten that, and you are saying, um, uh, you are going to lose that battle. So my brothers and sisters, that is what we can learn from uh, these people, these twelve spies. Okay, they failed. They failed God. And what they did, what they did, took each, each uh, children of Israel forty years instead of forty days. Let us remember that. God doesn't like those people who don't believe in Him. Believe in God and this will work out well for you. We thank you so much for tonight. We bless you for joining us at this uh, particular um, uh, Bible studies. It's about 12 spies of Israel. You can read it yourself. It's in the book of Numbers chapter 13 chapter 13 and 14. You can see all the story. You can study on it. And if you have any question, please get back to us. May the Lord bless you. Before I go, I pray for you. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ and the Lord will remember you in all your doings in the name of Jesus Christ. I lift it up. Every brass heaven upon your life, I destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every barriers against your promotion, every barriers against your progress, every barriers against your blessings, I destroy them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I lift you up. The Almighty God will open the door of progress towards you in the name of Jesus. Doors of blessings, doors of progress will come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Almighty God will bring your name into memory in the name of Jesus Christ. Thanks so much for joining us. But don't forget, we have an event coming up in the month of June next month. Okay, 25th of June. And in the afternoon, you might have finished your church service by then, 3 p.m. Okay, I will play the video now. Please join us, join us, join us uh, for our, our Bible conference. And the word was God. Hallelujah. Please join us and the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. We have a light refreshment for you on that day. So if you um, if you come, you are going to be fed with the word of God and then you are going to be fed with some light refreshment as well. May the Lord bless you as you come along in the name of Jesus Christ. We are back on Fridays of our Friday prayer meeting. Prayer changes things and also we have videos on YouTube. Please visit our uh, channel on YouTube. If you get to YouTube, just search for um, New Heart Christian Ministries. And uh, if you see any New Heart Christian Ministries there, you will see our logo. It's quite different. May the Lord bless you as you do so in the name of Jesus Christ. So, till Friday, when we come your way again, from all of us from New Heart Christian Ministries, stay blessed. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This word that was with God in the beginning became flesh and has now made his dwelling among us. The New Heart Christian Ministries, Linden, Barcelona in Essex, where hopes are defined, refined and restored by the power of the Almighty God cordially invites you to their first and 2023 Bible conference theme, and the word was God, where the power in the word of God will be manifest in a new dimension, releasing those in bondage, setting the captives free and bringing fulfillment to those that have lost hopes. With Pastor Raf Olurotimi, the Senior Pastor, RCCG Living Spring Parish, London, who is also the National Director, RCCG Sunday School UK, as the guest speaker of the day. The word of God is his testimony. Even though it may not look, it may not look so, but because he has said it, he testifies ahead of the physical manifestation. Date, 25th June 2023, Venue, Blue House Fan Community Association Hall. Drake Road, Lending, Basildon, Essex, SS15, 5UH. Time, 3 p.m. prompt. There will be an interactive section with biblical questions and answers, musical performances, and prayers for the people during this special service. Come and be blessed with the word of God that demolishes strongholds and every pretension that sets the step up against the knowledge of God. If you say prayer that we pray and pray and pray and we not stop praying until the victory is achieved. And the word was God. Bible conference to be hosted by New Heart Christian Ministries, Linden, Basidon in Essex, date in the afternoon of the 25th June 2023. 3 p.m. starts precisely by God's grace. The Lord bless you as you come along. My fathers. 
mothers, brothers and sisters in the Lord. By this time of the day when this program go start, your church Sunday service for dawn finish, make you please come and arrive in time of God go bless you plenty plenty in Jesus name. Amen. Be there and be blessed. Shalom.